The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands. 2010 census. And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, May 3rd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. A prominent Los Angeles criminal defense and civil rights attorneys whose clients included the Black Panther Party and Sirhan Sirhan has passed away. Luke McKissick was 72 years old. His son-in-law, Brian Chisholm, said McKissick passed away April 25th of complications from brain cancer at his home in Los Angeles, California. During a career that spanned more than 30 years, McKissick served as chief counsel for the Black Panther Party in Southern California and the American Indian Movement, defending Native Americans against charges stemming from the occupation of Wounded Knee, South Dakota in 1973. In 1969, he was one of three attorneys retained by Sirhan to handle his request for a new trial and appeals after his conviction for the assassination of Senator Robert Kennedy. McKissick was also a TV analyst during the O.J. Simpson criminal trial. At least two people drowned and a third person was missing earlier this week in a fishing boat accident on the Columbia River near Wishram, Washington. The Wasco County Sheriff's Office in the Dallas says a fourth person was recovered from the water April 30th with hypothermia. The Sheriff's Office says the occupants of the 18-foot boat were thrown into the water when the boat swamped in uh, 30 mile an hour winds and high swells. All four were Yakima tribal members. Honor Shinobek leaders and citizens demonstrated at the constituency office of the federal finance minister Jim Flaherty last Friday to voice concerns about the proposed harmonized sales tax, the new federal tax system now beginning to be implemented across Ontario. The, Minnesota's office, uh, the minister's office was closed for business and there was nobody there to take a letter requesting a meeting with leadership led by Anishinaabek Nation Grand Council Chief Patrick Madubi. The lights were on but no one was home, said Madubi. Minister Flaherty refuses to meet with us and continues to ignore us. Superior Regional Chief Peter Collins said that Minister Flaherty doesn't seem to care that thousands of First Nation families to whom his government publicly apologized recently and promised a better future would be further impoverished by the tax proposal. The Ontario Lottery and Gaming Com Corporation, a provincial government agency, tells, the, uh, tells them that the HST will reduce Casino Rama's net revenues by $13 million in its first year. Southwest Regional Chief Chris Plain said, leadership suspects that the cost to maintaining the point of sale for off reserve purchases is not so much a valuable money grab to government as it's more of a, an erosion and assault on First Nation sovereignty. Navajo Supreme Court justices heard arguments last week in a case as a, that has uh, furthered the rift between the tribe's legislative and executive branches. The Tribal Council voted last October to place Navajo President Joe Shirley Jr. on paid administrative leave pending an investigation into his dealings with two companies that operated on the reservation. Shirley successfully sought an order blocking the council resolution and an appeal followed. Shirley's attorney argued during a hearing in Window Rock, Arizona that the council illegally removed the president and has elevated its power to an unprecedented level. An attorney for the council contended the case was improperly expedited and that lawmakers engaged in legislative functions are immune from lawsuits under tribal law. The Obama administration has approved what will be the United States' first offshore wind farm off Cape Cod and 
inching the country closer to harvesting an untapped domestic energy source, the steady breezes blowing along its vast coast. U.S. Interior Secretary Ken Salazar announced his decision last week in Boston, Massachusetts, clearing the way for a 130 turbine wind farm in Nantucket Sound on the East Coast. Cape Wind was in its ninth year of federal review, and Salazar stepped in to bring what he called a much-needed resolution to the bitterly contested proposal. But members of the Aquina Wampanoag tribe of Martha's Vineyard have vowed to sue to stop Cape Wind from being built, saying it would interfere with sacred rituals and desecrate tribal burial sites. Others opposed to the project in envi on environmental grounds also have said they'll sue as well. Audrey Parker of the Alliance to Protect Nantucket Sound, the chief opponent to the Cape Wind, said the flawed project would be derailed in court. Don Sampson is resigning after seven years as the executive director for the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Reservation in Oregon. His resignation was effective last Friday. Under Sampson, the tribes established a community school, expanded the Wild Horse Resort and Casino, remodeled the Arrowhead Travel Plaza, and developed Coyote Technologies in the Coyote Business Park. Samson told the East Oregonian newspaper that the position consumed him 24-7 and he decided it was time to do something new. He has a new job lined up as an environmental specialist. The vice chairman of the Senate Indian Affairs Committee said last week he's concerned about the fairness of a proposed $3.4 billion settlement against the government for mismanaging Indian Trust Fund and is suggesting some revisions. U.S. Senator John Barrasso said he thinks attorney fees and costs should be capped at $50 million, up to $50 million less than proposed. He also suggested setting aside $50 million of the settlement money for certain lawsuit participants who received insufficient or unfair amounts under the settlement's payment formula. The money would be distributed by a special master appointed by the court. The Wyoming Republican called on tribal leaders across the country to share their input. Barrasso's comments followed statements last week from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi of California and Senate uh, Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada urging swift actions on the settlement. The proposed agreement calls for the Interior Department to distribute some $1.4 billion to more than 300,000 American Indians nationwide. Most participants in the class action lawsuit would receive at least $1,500. Under the deal, plaintiff's attorneys would be paid between $50 million and $100 million, with the exact amount to be determined by a judge. Cobell and the other named plaintiffs could receive up to $15 million to reimburse them for expenses paid. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us again. Come back again soon. Miigwech.